fans, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology, as well as work vlogs. So definitely check out the other videos on this channel if you're interested in any of those topics. And today I wanted to go over something that a few of you asked me in the comment section, which is about my ultimate career goals and just my train of thought when it comes to deciding on my next role or my next company even, or honestly even like switching out of cybersecurity and maybe into a different field in technology, which honestly is pretty common nowadays, but yeah, I just wanted to go over all that with you guys. And definitely feel free to skip around the video if you're more interested in certain things compared to others, like getting a master's or PhD or going for another certification, etc. So yeah, I'll definitely timestamp everything for you guys below. And if this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and definitely let me know down below what your career aspirations are and whether or not you want to go into cybersecurity or trying to be a software developer, you know, just feel free to let me know in the comments below. And I really like hearing you guys' background and experiences. As a little bit of background, if you're completely new to my channel, I graduated college in 2019 as a information technology major. I got a certification in computer security at my school. And for most of my college career, I was expecting to graduate and become a software engineer or a software developer. Specifically, my school, if you major in IT, it's not really Really like the network security type of IT but it's more like you want to be in technology but you don't necessarily want to learn all the algorithm stuff and I was really never that great at math which is why I switched from computer science to an IT major and in college ever since my sophomore year I had always wanted to be a software engineer I never had cybersecurity in my sights I never even thought about having a career in technology I mean having a career in cybersecurity and I didn't even know what they do outside of pen testing and another interest I had was in data science and in my junior year summer when I was doing my internship as a software engineer um, and I can link a bit more down below if you're interested in learning more about that and for reference I was a software engineering intern at JP Morgan Chase so I was really able to learn a lot in that role but actually during that summer I really had big plans to go into a master's program for data science so I didn't even plan on going into the workforce because I was thinking that I wanted to get my master's eventually and I feel like what better time than to get it right after your bachelor's before you kind of lose all of that like education for the last four years and have to start from scratch. And I was already like studying for the GRE, which is the main exam to get into a grad program, at least for data science. So I really did kind of like had my mind set on that. It wasn't until I went to a conference called Grace Hopper. The Grace Hopper Celebration is a really big conference or the biggest conference for women in technology. And that is where I went and met the company that I'm currently working for now and in a cybersecurity role. So before this, I never even considered it. And it just so happened that day I stumbled upon someone who was in cybersecurity and looking to hire in that role and it actually sounded really interesting. So because of that, I actually decided to drop my plans and go for that instead, which I don't think I actually regret it at all at this point in my career. Um, I've only been working for about a year and a half now, also currently in a rotational program. So I've been on two teams. I graduate from the program in June of this year, so in a few months. And after that, I'll be in my permanent role. But from here, I think my main three routes that I'm interested in are cybersecurity, going back to software development, or going into data science. So let's start with cybersecurity, which is kind of like the main gist of this channel, I feel like. It, I just feel like I'm, I'm kind of betraying you guys if I just like don't talk about this. But yeah, cybersecurity has never really been top of mind when I was looking for careers in college. When I originally got into this and started doing capture the flags and a bunch of different um, challenges with my team as well as a few mentors that I have, I was really thinking, hey, maybe I do want to do pet testing and then get my CH certification and then my CSCP or I forget that one, it's like the Certified Security Professional. If I'm butchering that acronym, I will put the correct one on the screen. I am sorry for that. <laughs> I'm just mostly familiar with the CEH, which is definitely a bit more junior compared to the one that I just described. And yeah, and then from there, I would want to go into Red Team. Now I know that after I've been on this team for almost a year, that it is really hard to get the skills that you need to get into the Red Team if you're just working like a nine to five doing this. and. Um, a lot of times I'm not really sure how devoted I am, especially to pen testing. I don't know if that's something that I need to work on or if that's something that is just natural and maybe I should be looking for something else that I'm really, really, really passionate about. It's just hard because in your early career, you can never tell with these things because you just need more experience and try out roles that you may not like as much to really get the idea of, hey, I actually really like that role and that team. And now I know because I have something to compare it to. So yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. But for the most part, I am interested in kind of like a mix between cybersecurity and development. So I want to be in a role where I'm not specifically maybe hacking all the time, but also able to use some of my development skills because I don't want to forget those skills and I still want to use them 
in whatever role that I'm doing, if that makes sense. And a lot of roles in cybersecurity don't use coding unless you're in a pen testing role, software development. I might potentially do that. I don't really know right now. Obviously, I have not really been coding as much as I used to when I was actually, you know, a developer, but I do like debugging. I notice that the times when I'm really, really in the zone are when I'm debugging my code and trying to figure out something, when something's wrong or whether I'm doing my capture the flag challenges. And those really, really get me absorbed into what I'm doing. And I think that's kind of like the key in finding what I'm actually interested in. And that's why I really want the best of both worlds. And that's why I want to be able to use those skills and not forget them and, you know, forget all of my coding because that is what I went to school for. So. I do want to use it. I do have like my own side projects as well as like my own website that I code myself. So I do code everything from scratch, but I do want to make it part of my career as well and not just something that I'm doing on the side. So yeah, I might eventually go back to software development, software engineering. And honestly, my internship as a software developer, that was probably one of my favorite, favorite jobs that I've ever had. So, I mean, it could have been the team, it could have just been the company, but I might eventually go back to it if I feel like, hey, maybe I should, you know, try something new. But besides that, I also would want to potentially try data science. This is something that I had been interested in since probably my freshman year. Even though I didn't really like math, I always felt like data science was the cool major. I don't know if that makes sense. But basically, I also did some undergrad research helping one of the professors at my school that did a lot of big data projects. I was mostly doing like menial stuff, like cleaning data, extracting data using their Python scripts from a few APIs that they were pulling data from. So it was mostly just a bunch of data extraction and cleaning. I never really got to touch any of the actual like algorithms or AI stuff, but it's really interesting to me, even though I'm not technical in that sense. And that was why I really wanted to get my master's degree in data science. And of course I don't have the math background for that, which is kind of like the main thing that's preventing me from going for it. And honestly, yeah, that's, that's really the main thing. So maybe it's just fear that's keeping me back from trying it out. Yeah, I do eventually want to maybe try something similar to that or do something with data science or maybe even just supporting a team, AI or machine learning stuff. Yeah, that's kind of where I am right now, but there's definitely a small, small chance that I would go into data science because I don't think that I have the skill set for it right now, but definitely sticking with cybersecurity, trying to find my way through what teams are best for me or going into software development are probably the main things that I'm kind of like splitting paths into right now as I graduate from my rotation program and go into my permanent full-time role. I talk a bit about the master's program that I wanted to do in data science. And since then, there are a few other degrees that I was potentially considering, specifically a master's in computer science, a master's in cybersecurity, or a MBA, which is like a master's of business administration. I think, at least I think that's what it stands for. But that's definitely more like business side. If you're planning on going to like upper management or something like that, maybe you would go for an MBA. I feel like I would want a master's degree in some kind of science field first before I get an MBA. I know a lot of people who do that and have like a master's of some kind of science and then a MBA on top. And that really makes them super strong in you know their background and their experiences and education level. So master's of data science is probably not going to be a big consideration right now, but master's in cybersecurity, um, I do notice a lot of people in pen testing have that. But again, I also feel like a lot of people also have psychology degrees because cybersecurity just needs a lot of different backgrounds. And you don't necessarily need to have a degree in cybersecurity to do well in the field. So that's why I was kind of thinking about specifically getting a master's in computer science, which is pretty general. It kind of covers all the bases. You're going to go into algorithms, data structures, you know, everything that you can take in terms of computer science gen eds. And you can just do all that with a broader scope. So that's why I was thinking maybe that one would be better for me. I know there's a bunch of different variations of these degrees out there, um, kind of like mixing like cybersecurity and coding or you know something like fancy so there are definitely a bunch of niche degrees out there that i am looking into but i don't know those are kind of like my main three choices in terms of advanced degrees i don't think i would ever get a phd but i mean i guess you'd never say never but most likely i probably won't just because of the time commitment uh the dedication to academia is definitely required for that and i don't know if i have that right now um at least at this point in my life Maybe later on I might, I don't know. But yeah, what do you guys think about that? Do you think you would ever get an advanced degree? I feel like it definitely wouldn't be just for your career. You have to actually want it outside of a job requirement to get a PhD or honestly any master's degree because otherwise you kind of lose motivation after a few semesters and you kind of drop it. So you definitely need to want it to actually pull through with it. But I'd love to hear you guys' experience with that too. 
Okay, so the next thing is certifications. So I know I talked about it on this channel, but I got my Security Plus certification last November, and I can link a video that includes all the resources I used to study for that. But certifications only applies if I stick to cybersecurity, at least in my opinion. Um, so for example, I feel like in the software development, you don't really need a certification. Um, there's not a lot out there. I mean, there's like boot camps and stuff like that that teach you computer science, but your coding is gonna show how good you are. <laughs> you know, like you don't need a certification to tell you that. And I don't think a lot of companies hire for certifications. They hire developers based on years in the industry or years of experience. But in cybersecurity, there are a lot of certifications that HR looks through for jobs and different roles and different job requirements. The main ones I was looking at were the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification, which is the CEH, probably one of the more popular mid-tier pen testing certifications. And then the CISSP, yeah, that one is definitely also very, very popular in terms of kind of like mid-level certifications. But I also think that one is less technical compared to like the ethical hacking, more so related to a broader scope of cybersecurity professional. I feel like the CEH is more niche in ethical hacking and pet testing, while the CISSP, a lot of different cybersecurity professionals have those in a bunch of different roles, as well as people who are in management or upper management. And of course the certification that I was talking about earlier, the OSCP, which I definitely butchered the acronym for, and that one is a very, very popular one. Um, after talking to one of my mentors, who I think is one of the smartest pen testers that I know, he is actually studying for that certification and taking it really soon. So yeah, there's a, definitely a lot, a lot that goes into it. And based on what he's told me, um, that one is a lot, a lot harder than the CEH with the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification. So if you want to make that next jump after getting your CEH, definitely look into the OSCP if you haven't already. And I feel like if I am gonna eventually progress in my career in terms of pen testing, ethical hacking, or even like diverge somewhere else in cybersecurity, these are the three main certifications that I'm gonna be looking at, potentially getting, I don't really know. Aside from maybe a few smaller like cloud security and you know, smaller certifications like that. But yeah, these are probably the big ones that are kind of like milestone certifications. Like a few people who are in cybersecurity, they'll be in the field for maybe four or five years. And then after that, they're like, Maybe I'll get my CISSP to move up in my career or get a new role. So the next thing is potentially going into management or having my own team. I like getting hands-on with things and I like working on things um, kind of like in depth. I think there's like a, there's like a T, it's like a breath versus depth. So there's people who go really depth first and you're a SME or a subject matter expert in one area and people know you for that. Like if someone talks about data lakes, you are the data lake god and they go to you for advice and everyone knows that you're the data lake person but i don't think i want to specifically be an sme in one area i want to try a bunch of different things and try to take examples or my experiences and knowledge from all of those roles and try to come up with something new or try to do something else or start a new project or something like that so i do want to be like hands-on in terms of what I want to work on in my career. I mean, being a jack of all trades means that you're a master of none. That just means I'm not gonna be like, you know, super good at anything, but I'll know stuff from a bunch of different buckets um, in cybersecurity or in technology that could help me either make decisions or come up with project ideas. But these are all things that I'm keeping in mind for the future because I definitely don't want to close any doors just in case I, you know, eventually want to open them back up or get into them like five, 10, 15 years down the line because you never know. Like right now I'm 23, <laughs> um, very, very early career. And I just want to try as many things as possible. I think that's it. Like, I don't want to stick to one team for five years and then be in my late 20s and then try something else. I want to try a whole bunch of different things. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about that too. I feel like I'm just asking you guys for career advice at this point, but <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you guys are in college right now and kind of thinking what people are thinking in their um, early career and you know, this is what I'm thinking, so. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is another anomaly, I feel like, when it comes to career options. For most people, they kind of expect to work a 9 to 5 until retirement, and then maybe they'll do some side hustles and stuff. But for the most part, they're a W-2 employee for most of their life, and then they retire, they leave the workforce. But for me, I do feel like there are some things that I'm interested in that might not necessarily be that way. I do think I want to eventually own my own business, I don't know exactly in what. I don't even know if it's related to technology. So yeah, I, that's always in the back of my mind. Maybe open up like a dessert shop, like a bakery, or maybe open up an online store, or maybe do my own cybersecurity consulting business. You know, these are all 
business ideas and thoughts that I have, but I don't really know exactly where I want to go with them. At least for right now in my early career, I do want to get that industry experience. And not saying that owning your own business isn't work, but in terms of an industry level W2 job, I feel like that experience is really intriguing to me. And I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that it's gotten me, all the networking, all the people that I've met. So I definitely want to stay in the industry for a while, but who knows, maybe if I again offer to teach at a school, like be an adjunct professor or you know, do something on the side that isn't just a W2 role, I feel like I might be open to that potentially. So yeah, these are all just thoughts that I'm having. I don't really know exactly where it's going, but I definitely want to keep it in mind. Okay, so I mentioned it earlier, but cybersecurity consulting is something that I am kind of interested in. But for cybersecurity, you would kind of be like a contractor for a company and pretty much giving advice, maybe pen testing, maybe helping people set up their IT infrastructure, different things like that, based on whatever experiences and backgrounds that you have. That's definitely something that I've been considering a little bit to you. But of course, none of this is really set to stone. But I do like giving advice. I do like talking to people and working with people and different teams and trying to figure out their problems or like the solutions to their problems. So yeah, I feel like those are all things I like to do. But I really do think that consulting in some aspect will be in my future, I just don't know how much. And then another thing is just working part-time. So there are companies that have part-time roles, part-time contractor roles that aren't 40 hours a week. So that might be something that I could potentially think about doing if I am going to kind of like navigate through a bunch of different career options or a different, not even career options, like career structures. But yeah, uh, I think that's kind of it. I know this is kind of like a brain dump of all of my potential career options, if this happens, if this happens. And a lot of these options or decisions are based on things that are happening right now. Like they say, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So there's gonna be times when you're going up and then down and sideways and in circles. So that's just the beauty of it. And I'm okay with that. I used to really hate this feeling of not having things set in stone, but now I've really come to appreciate it. And I'm really grateful for all the options that I have available to me and the opportunities because it's the case that nothing is set in stone and I'm able to play an active role in it and making those decisions in real time. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, um, definitely let me know about your career aspirations, what you're thinking, any problems or issues or concerns that you're having, just drop them in the comments and we can definitely start a discussion. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. Thank you guys again for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!